Hi, this is Misha, and this video is going to take a closer look at the early Nambus, specifically the Type A, or Army Type, or Nambu Type, often called by collectors the Papa Nambu. And the Type B. often called the baby Nambu by collectors. Now we have an older video kind of looking at all Japanese pistols together, but I, I thought these would deserve uh, their own video, plus we have a couple of new ones to look at, so here we go. Before we actually get in, <clears throat> excuse me, to the designs by Kaijiro Nambu, let's look at this gun briefly. This is the Type 26 Revolver. This was the standard issue sidearm in Japan throughout the late 19th century and early 20th century, really through World War I and beyond into the 20s. It's a very traditional revolver. It's a top brake, kind of based on the Smith & Wesson top brake design. It has a removable side plate for maintenance kind of like a, uh, oh, had you on the right side all along, kind of like a Austrian Rast Gasser, which we do have a video on that as well. It is a double action only. No hammer here, you can't cock it back. It fires nine millimeter. I believe it, it's nine millimeter Japanese. It's a unique cartridge. It's I think nine by 22. And it's, um, it's like a lot of the 9mm revolver rounds of the day. It's kind of anemic by today's standards, but, um, you know, it did what it needed to do. The gun has about a 4 and 3 quarters inch barrel. We have fixed sights, wood grips. It's a very standard revolver. Originally, these were designed for cavalry use, but eventually most everyone in the military that ended up with a sidearm would have a Type 26. These would be adopted in 1894, which was the 26th year of the reign of the Meiji Emperor. But they really wouldn't go into production until a year or two later. These would be built at the Koshika, or Tokyo Artillery Arsenal. And they would produce about 59 to 61,000, with production ending around 1923. They would build a few more from parts, and they would continue refurbishing these through the 30s. Sometimes you'll see uh, horizontally lined grips, not unlike a Nambu Type 14, and these are uh, usually replacement grips. They might have been grips used on very late assembled guns as well, but um, these were still in uh, substitute standard service in World War II. It's a gun. It goes bang. It's reasonably reliable. But our video is not really on this gun. I just wanted to show what Japan was issuing while these other guns were in development and in production. And this would remain, as I said, standard issue throughout most of the military during World War I. What we're looking at <clears throat> is the original, well, so somewhat original, I suppose, Type A Nambu. Now this is a so-called Model 1902 Modified. This is the first serious revision of Nambu's original design. Now, in 1897, Nambu was assigned to the Tokyo Arsenal, and he was um, originally working on upgrading the Type 30 Arasaka. He was also assigned to work on the, uh, the Year 30. Go away. Go away. I don't need your help today. Foxy, go. <laughs> they always like to get involved, as you know. <laughs> but he was originally assigned to work on the, the year 30 automatic pistol plan, but it was given a low priority. Really, they were focusing on rifles at, at, at the era, trying to improve the Arasaka rifle. But nevertheless, Kajiro Nambu, along with an, a team of other Japanese uh, engineers and experts and military officials, did do a tour of Europe around the turn of the century. They looked at then cutting edge self-loading pistol designs such as the 1894 Steyr, the C96 broom handle Mauser, 
and the C93 Borchard and early Luger prototypes from 1899 and, and so on, right before the adoption in Switzerland. So they were kind of seeing what was out there, seeing what they wanted to do. Nambu came back to Japan and he designed the original 1902, so called the day Grandpa Nambu. This gun fired an 8 millimeter. It was a bottlenecked round, 8 by 22. So a little smaller diameter, if also about the same size as the revolver cartridge, lengthwise. And it would go into limited production at the Tokyo Arsenal around 1903. Now the original Grandpa Nambu mechanically was extremely similar to the 1902 modified known today as the Papa Nambu. The major differences included it had a smaller trigger guard, it had a rounded trigger, this one's kind of a slab side trigger, It had a wooden base plate to the magazine. The cocking piece was a slightly different shape. And all Papa Nambus would have a stock lug cut in the back. Now, they would work with the Papa, with, excuse me, the Grandpa, that would have the stock lug. They would work, work with the original 1902 design from Nambu. The military would test it out, the army, and around 1904, they tentatively liked it, but they wanted it to have a few upgrades, modifications to meet their specifications. And that's where the modified Papa Nambu comes from. It's around this time it also receives the designation Type A Nambu, as did the Grandpa. So the Grandpa and the Papa were officially both Type A Nambus. Later, it would also receive the designation Army Type, or Nambu Type. In fact, the markings on the side say Army Type, which is kind of ironic, as we'll see in a little bit. But some of the modifications that the military, the Army, wanted, we, we talked about. Larger trigger guard, a larger kind of squared off trigger. They switched from the wooden base plate to this uh, alloy one. It's not steel, but it's an alloyed metal and a few other small differences. Now interestingly, the first modified 1902s would still have a stock slot here, but they would quickly change their mind and most all of them would either be made without the stock slot or they would be filled in at the factory. So yes, this gun went into trials in 1904 and sources kind of disagree. You have to keep in mind with Japanese guns, we don't have all the original documentation. Much of it was lost over the years, so we have to kind of go by observations and whatnot. <clears throat> but sources say that the modified 1902, the Papa Nambu, replaced the Grandpa Nambu at the Tokyo Arsenal in production around serial number 2400. And this happened somewhere between 1904 and 1906. It seems like the last grandpa type guns were shipped out no, no later than 1906. Now keep in mind the differences on these are very cosmetic. Just different shaped parts and things. So really differences to a, between a grandpa and a papa Nambu are very minor. So these would go into production at the Tokyo Artillery Arsenal. They were definitely in production by 1906. And while the army never adopted the Type A Nambu, it did approve it for use, private use, private purchase by its officers, which was common practice in the, uh, in the Japanese military at the time. They wanted their officers to purchase their own sidearms. We see this in many other militaries of the day as well, so it's not unique. Italy and Britain also had a similar practice. We're firing the 8mm Nambu bottlenecked cartridge. This has a few unique features from later Nambus. Even though we pretty much got away from the stock slot and stock with the Papa Nambu, we still retain the adjustable tangent rear sight, which is out to about 500 meters. 
We don't have a manual safety on the side. Rather, we have this grip safety in the front here. Pull the trigger, nothing happens. Squeeze it. You can pull. We have a swiveling lanyard ring. It's worth noting that on the original Grandpa Nambu, this lanyard ring was fixed, similar to what you see on the Type 14. We have a checkered knob here. This mechanically is a little different from later Type 14 Nambus. We have a single guide rod on the left side with one spring running from here to here. There's no spring on the right side, so it's just a single spring gun. We have a bolt. The striker tail is actually on the side, not the bottom, but it is still a striker fired gun. We have checkered wooden grips. We have a two-piece magazine release, and as I drop it, you'll see the boat will go forward. If I can, I have to go in here. These, they don't have a manual release, and the only thing holding this boat back is the uh, follower, so I hate to, uh, to do that. We have an eight-round mag. The body is nickeled. As I said, the base is made out of an alloyed metal. We have this on the side to assist in loading because it's a pretty stiff spring. This magazine is quite similar in its feed angle to say on a Luger. Let's see here, I can't pull the trigger if I squeeze the grip safety. Now this one here was made at the Tokyo Artillery Arsenal. And they would produce about 4,700 Papa Nambus in addition to the 2,400 Grandpas. So total serial numbers would go up to about 7,100. At the Tokyo Artillery Arsenal, they would build these until 1923 when the Great Kanto earthquake happened and the arsenal was shut down for a number of years. Again, the Army would never adopt these, even though they're marked Army type. But, the Japanese Navy would. The other manufacturer of Type A 1902 modified Nambus was Tokyo Gas and Electric, and they would actually receive the Japanese Navy contract. The Navy would also try out the gun, and in 1909 it would officially adopt it and order 1500. These would be made at Tokyo Gas and Electric. A few years later during World War I it would order an additional 2500. Now the Tokyo Gas and Electric guns are very similar to the Tokyo Artillery arsenal guns, except they are built on a two-piece frame. This frame is two pieces. They would join it together with three roll pins, then they would weld it all up and then weld it smooth. Very high quality job. The two-piece frame was simply faster and cheaper to produce. And really the only difference, if you can see here, is in the back in front of the lanyard ring, the, the Tokyo, if I can get my hand out of there, I need three hands, the back here, there's a milled out section in the frame, whereas here it's smooth. That's the easiest way to tell this is a one piece frame, this is a two. That's really the only major difference. It's also worth noting that after the two naval contracts were fulfilled, Tokyo Gas and Electric would continue to build these for private purchase. And after the Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923, when production was shut down at the Tokyo Arsenal, they would get a lot of the parts from the, uh, from the Tokyo Arsenal, and they would do one final production run of 1902 modified Nambus around 1927-1928. They would do about 650, give or take, guns out of this batch using Tokyo Gas and Electric and Tokyo Artillery Arsenal parts. Sometimes they would use their two-piece frames, and sometimes they would use the leftover frames from the artillery arsenal. So you'll see quite a few different things. This is actually one of them. It has a serial in the 
eight thousands. And it would, um, some people say this contract was for the army. Some people say that the dual markings are just because of the multiple parts. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, there was a final run in the late 20s of about 650 guns. All told, it looks like Tokyo Gas and Electric built about 5,000 to 5,700. And the total production numbers range from about 9,300 up to about 10,500. Again, we don't know exactly, especially with some overlapping serials here and there and, you know, uh, Tokyo Gas and Electric using some artillery arsenal frames that were never used. So we, we don't know for sure, but it was a very small number with uh, main production ending after World War I and then a small run in the 1920s from the two manufacturers. You do see a few more Tokyo Gas Electric guns and you do Tokyo Artillery Arsenals, but both are quite, uh, quite rare. Other than the difference in the frame, there really, there really isn't. Of course, some of the Tokyo Gas and Electrics will have naval anchors on them. And there's a couple of different minor variations of how the anchor is stamped, and that's pretty neat. And some guns like this one would never have a stock slot here. Whereas guns like this one may have had a stock slot that was uh, that was filled in because of the larger hump here hard to say but it could have done the same thing these would be officially used by the Navy and privately purchased in the Army but they were never standard issue and while the type 14 Nambu was very common and became standard in World War II, there are still quite a few Papa Nambus being used. Now that said, the reason you hardly find any of these that are all matching today, especially the magazine, since they quit making these in the 20s and since they were used in China in the 30s and the Pacific in the 40s, as some guns would break down naturally, they would take parts from other guns to keep them running. So no one really knows how many of the roughly 10,000 that were made are still existing in the world but people say probably one-third or even fewer because there was a pretty high attrition rate since they were used in two major wars, not to mention just time. I mean, they started making these in 1906. Guns were out. So since they weren't making parts after 1923, 1928, that means they had, that's why a lot of guns are, are not matching. Now, to go along with the Type A, Kajiro Nambu introduced... The Type B Baby Nambu. As you can tell, it is the exact gun, just smaller, right down to its cartridge. This fires a 7mm bottlenecked cartridge, 7 by 20 smaller little round. It still feeds from a nickel mag, just looks like a Papa mag, but smaller. Still have checkered grips. Now, of course, these never would have stock slots. And they have the fixed lanyard loop originally on the grandpa. They also have fixed rear sights because obviously you're not going to need a um, adjustable sight for a gun like this. We still have the same safety. And we have the same operating system. This is actually a locked breech gun which is effectively firing a 32 caliber bullet. So it's really not necessary to have it as a locked breech, but they did. So I have the single guide rod here with spring, bolt, striker. We still hold open on an empty mag, but like with the Papa, you have to kind of go in here and press. You can just pull these out, but I don't like putting extra stress on these old guns, so I don't. It's worth noting that none of these guns have grip safe. Oh, excuse me, uh, have uh, magazine disconnect safeties. Now the Type B, the Baby Nambu, would be produced at the Tokyo Artillery Arsenal starting around 1904, and the first 400, 450 would have quite a few features from the Grandpa Nambu, such as a wooden base plate magazine. The original style of trigger and the original kind of shape to the cocking knob. 
and as I said, it has the fixed lanyard loop as well. But as they would introduce improvements for the modified 1902, the Type A Papa, they would introduce these in the baby as well. Now the baby Nambu was never officially adopted by anyone, not the Navy or the Army. However, it was cleared for private purchase by, by high-ranking officers. Now, these would very, very rarely be found in the hands of lower-ranking officers because of price. They were very expensive, and most low-ranking officers simply couldn't afford it. So unless a person was from a wealthy family, they, they would get something else. That, uh, even imported pistols were quite a, bit, quite a bit cheaper at the time. But they would, they would make these. They wouldn't make them in heavy numbers. They would make them until the Great Kanto Earthquake, as I said. They would build about 6,000 total at Tokyo Artillery Arsenal and another 500 at Tokyo Gas and Electric, making the Tokyo Gas and Electric Type B Baby Nambu very rare and desirable. Now, since these were purchased by officers who really didn't use them in the field, they probably carried them around an office or even put them in an office drawer. You can usually find them more or less matching with even a matching mag. They're usually in quite good shape and very, fired very little. It was mostly a status symbol. But as you see, it is a small gun. It would be a decent self-protection gun, better than throwing a rock, I suppose. But yeah, the, the Type B Baby Nambu. Obviously, they, these would still be carried in World War II, but very, very rarely in actual combat. Most of them were just, when the American GIs got them, they were just surrendered over. But it's a neat little gun. And uh, pretty, pretty well known on the collector's market today. But yeah, I thought we would just look at the early designs from Nambu again. We have a Papa from Tokyo Gas and Electric. We have a Baby from Tokyo Artillery. And we have a Papa from Tokyo Artillery. These are the first automatic pistols to be adopted and built in Japan. And in fact, the Type 26 revolver was the first domestically designed sidearm of any type to be adopted and manufactured in Japan. As we've discussed, Japan was kind of rapidly modernizing in the late 19th century, and so even though the automatic pistol program was given a relatively low priority, Kaijiro Nambu put his effort into it and very quickly came up with the design. Some people like to call this a, a copy of the Luger. As you can tell, mechanically, it's really not. He might have taken some inspiration from the Luger, but really that's only in maybe the grip angle and the magazine style. The operating system, all of that is extremely really unique. I mean, if, if the Grandpa came out in 1902, that's a pretty darn early automatic pistol. It beats out, for example, the, the all but the very, very early versions of uh, what would become the 1911. In 1902, there just weren't a heck of a lot of automatic guns, especially designed for military use, quite out yet. But, uh, you know, so Japan was trying to be on the forefront, and while the uh, while the Papa Nambu, the Type A Nambu, wasn't 100% successful, it did see some success and it did see combat use in several different theaters. And while it did fire the original 8mm cartridge, which wasn't the strongest, it was, you know, about like a 380. These do have good triggers. They are known for, for good accuracy. Reliability, well, compared to other early automatics, it was, it was okay. It was fine. It wasn't horribly unreliable, but... You know, it was certainly an early design. If you have any questions or comments, we really welcome them below. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already subscribed, we'd really appreciate it if you do so. If you like Japanese guns, we have quite a few other videos. So you might want to check those out. As always, this is Misha. And please tune in again soon for more hopefully interesting videos. We'll catch you next time.